What's up guys, Shane here from Figure Deck 3D Printing. Today I'm checking out some nylon filament from Kodak. Welcome back guys. So uh, yeah, this looks a little bit different because I already filmed all this and I didn't realize I wasn't wearing my lab microphone. So the audio came out horrible on it and because it, it was sitting on the floor. So we're just gonna go with it from this way. So we're gonna talk about the packaging first and I can say it's packaged like all the other Kodak filaments. You've seen some of my previous reviews. Uh, it comes in a super branded box here. Uh, they have the Kodak symbol all over it. This is actually the one for the flex because I don't have the nylon box anymore. But yeah, they have all their information here on the side, QR code, their Kodak. A symbol logo is everywhere on it. It's here on the inner sleeve, which goes around, and then they have a nice Ziploc bag with, again, a Kodak on it. Tells you nylon 12 or whatever type filament you have. This is a natural color, uh, and that it is a 750 gram roll. It's all the Kodak filaments are 750 grams, and it's nice that they include a resealable bag with a nice size desk pack in it. Looking at the spool, these are custom spools because they actually have their logo pressed into it, which is very cool to see. And they have a very interesting little type of latching mechanism to kind of pull the film in. It kind of pinches it rather than the old school, just loop it through one, loop it through that, or loop it through one if you want, uh, however it is that you plan on doing it. But this kind of puts it in there and you kind of just pull on it and it kind of snugs it in there. It works for some of the other filaments, but the, the nylon is just so doggone smooth. It, it just doesn't want to like stay in there. It just kind of like pops right back out. So it doesn't work as well. I said before in another video, they need to work on that but that's pretty minor. And again, here they sell you the stats here on the spool. Now that we're through all that, you can see I printed just over half the spool on a bunch of different things here. So I didn't actually realize until I was about halfway through the prints that I was printing this stuff way too hot. I was using my standard nylon profile, Instafy 3D, which prints nylon at 206 degrees centigrade. Well, they recommend 225 degrees. I was like, oh, yeah, didn't see that. It worked well for most everything until I got here to Scorpion's Mask, which we'll show a closer look in a minute. But there definitely was some burning going on in the back. And once I changed it, I was like, oh, that looks so much better now. It still has really good layer adhesion even at the lower temp. I only went down to 235. I thought going lower would actually might end up like ruining the print. And this was already like more than halfway through. I didn't want to risk it. So I just went to 235 and it came out just fine. Still some issues in there, but We'll talk about what that means with your printer in a minute. But yeah, so you see, I finished some prints. So let's take a closer look at them and see how they turned out, see what kind of details we got out of this filament. First up, my Maker Coin, and this came out really, really nice. Super smooth. I can't get over how smooth nylon actually is when it's printed correctly. Uh, it just comes out really nice. There is a little bit of ABS. I did a, a previous video on ABS, and this was printed shortly after that one was filmed. So there's a little bit of red on this one that was still stuck in the glue because I'm lazy and I don't clean the glue off at all. Uh, but the support went on here really well. You can't tell because it's the natural, basically clear filament. Uh, I'm very surprised, again, just how smooth it all turned out. The overhangs went really, really well. There's one here which is kind of hard to tell, but that, see how that one's a little bit rough right there? All the other ones are really smooth and no real issues with them, but that's just that one right there, I don't know, it just did not go as well as the rest of them did, but it's still not a big deal. A little bit of stringing in there, you can see just a few in there, but other than that, I, I thought this was actually a very successful print. Again, this was at 260 degrees centigrade, not the recommended 225. So lately, I've been kind of obsessing over these carabiners. Uh, this is the first one I printed, but I had some pretty serious warping in there as you can kind of see that did not uh, go very well at all but it does fit in there uh, well enough it does actuate again you're not only opening about that much if you go any further oh this actually does go all the way um, it won't last that little for long probably uh, other filaments if I can go I can usually get a good actuation like this but if I go all the way and then this this joint right here actually is the one that breaks usually but it actually works out pretty well uh, so then I reprinted it uh, with a few better settings. I actually added a little more glue stick. This one was after several prints. I didn't reapply my glue. Reapplied glue on this one. Perfectly flat. Came out really nice. It actuates really well. Let's see if it goes. A little crack in there. Right. It goes almost all the way back without issue. That's not too bad at all. So you can see there was a little bit of something gunk on my nozzle. So that came off on this. When you print so hot, you're gonna get some stuff coming off your nozzle regardless what your settings are. It's just gonna happen. That actually works really well. This is probably the best one 
I've had to date. Uh, let's just try it with the crap one here. Strength wise. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yep, that's not breaking. Wow, man, that's so, look how much that bends out there. Watch this. Oh, man, yeah. Whoo, wow. I have deformed it even. <laughs> and it goes right back almost. I mean, that is impressive, I must say. That, that's really, that's not breaking at all. Mm, man, nope. Ah, yep, they're not breaking. We tried. I was on Thingiverse, and I thought this was kind of cool. Two objects interlinked, you know, kind of do the magic. No, they don't come apart. They print like this, with the tops up, and it's a, oh, what's it? I guess it's like six-sided. So it's on one side, and they both are just barely, they just barely miss each other right there in the middle. And they print just like that. And I was very intrigued with that. Actually, I'm sorry, they printed like this. They're much closer together. I was very intrigued with this. This is the medium size. I think these are 92 millimeters, what these ones are. Um, I didn't want to upscale it anymore. But it worked really good over the, the you know, at such an angle there. You can see a little bit of like ridging inside. Outsides were perfect. Insides there were a little bit of issues. But I mean, it's nylon. It is super strong. Let's see if we can pull these apart. Nope. Can't do that either. I mean, this stuff, I printed the higher temperature. Man, this just super sealed it. It's really cool stuff. It's just amazing. So it's so easy to move against each other because it's so like lubricated feeling. It's insane. Can't get over that at all. So I did try to make a labyrinth box, but this one actually, you can see there, it had warped quite a bit. It's, um, it's a little tight um, because of the, the nylon. So I think it should be something different. So I reprinted it um, a little slower and a little cooler and it's, it's still fairly tight but it's a little bit better than what it was. Um, no, that's the dead end. Um, but yeah, so it, it works, it's a little tight. I would probably scale up, um, either do this at like 99.5 or do this at 100.5 scale, just kind of give you a little more clearance. It's, I printed this exact model on the Fortech FT5, the current setup with PLA, and they come out perfect. I printed dozens of them on there at once without a problem. This. Nylon is a little too tight. So again, it's not really a perfect application for it. I kind of wanted to see if it would slide any better. So if I can get this apart, I'll probably reprint this top part just that, you know, half a percentage bigger and see if it slides any easier that way. I was asking around on my live feed what people think I should print in the nylon because I don't really know what to print with it that would make it, you know, show how good it is. So I went and printed this Hubison X4 quadcopter chassis, which I've been using for a while, Printed in PETG and PLA. PLA shatters. PETG holds up to like a few crashes, but then it doesn't. But also, uh, PETG is much more rigid than this. So this nylon is very flexible, as you can see. I can move it around a lot. But this is much more impact resistant than PETG is. So I'm wondering, will this work out okay for a small quad? Obviously a big one, probably not, because the motors have so much torque to them. But these tiny, tiny motors, do not consume all that much power. So I think it will be okay and it won't warp this too much, but it's just something I wanted to try out um, and see if this will work. So eventually I'll end up doing some videos with that little quadcopter and we can see how it shapes up. Uh, two more prints, so a vase, gotta do a vase mode, uh, one I found online. It actually has like almost like this bluish hint to it. I don't know why there's nothing blue in my background here around. It just kind of has that like hint to it. I don't know why, but this was three bottom. The one perimeter in vase mode is M53D, and it came out great. I can actually put it to my mouth and blow in it, and it's completely airtight, so I know this would be able to hold water. I didn't actually try water in this one for some reason, um, probably because I didn't have time right now, but I really liked it. Um, it looks really cool, nice and shiny, fairly see-through there. You can see what's in there, so a nice little print. Finally, something longer, a little more complicated. This is Scorpion's mask. It's just like the Sub-Zero mask I printed a long time ago. It's my profile picture for a while. And this came out okay, but you can see down here, it kept catching onto the nozzle as it would curl up a bit. And I kind of thought, maybe I'm printing too hot. So I turned it down and eventually it did finally even out. Uh, I had the same thing over here. But this, this side was really mucked up from just the heat there just being way too high. So I turned it from 260, just above it, went down to 235 and the rest came out great except for this one spot here. I don't know why, 
on these two, I guess these overhangs were just too extreme for the nylon with very little cooling. It just, you know, was too extreme, so it kept rubbing the nozzle, and it rubs the nozzle, it rubs off what's on there. When it's printing so hot, you're gonna get things loosened up, so it's gonna kinda get stuck on there. But either way, it still looks really, really cool. Yeah. And lastly, I printed this bomb. Uh, this is the 50, 50 millimeter uh, German mortar. I printed this in uh, a PETG before. The bottom of this one did warp. Uh, it's kind of hard because it has these very small, uh, single extrusion uh, fins on there that are like that, so it did peel up a bit there. Otherwise, it came out pretty well. I did print this one with support inside for the nose cone here, and I thought that would make it better, but because the actual whole print did warp, even this one did warp a little bit, the nose did not, but the main body and the tail did, it doesn't quite screw together properly, and because it's nylon, it is so smooth, I can't really get a grip on it. Uh, another thing I did notice, I didn't notice in these prints so much, but this one I definitely noticed, the retractions are off because I printed all three parts on the bed at once. Retractions were definitely too low. I did have a little, I do have this like beading here on the side. I can take a putty knife or an exacto knife and just, just steam it right off real quick, but you wanna tune your settings the best you can, so I'm gonna up my uh, retraction about a millimeter, millimeter and a half. I think that would be able to solve this. But again, just have to tune your profile for the you know filament you're using. All right, so I wanna say thank you to Kodak for sending me this filament along with all the other ones. They're new into 3D printing schemes, so they're really pushing out to see, to get people to try out their filaments. It's not too bad so far. Um, I do think they need to change up on the spool here. I don't know if they're making their own filament. They're probably buying it from someone. I have no idea who they're buying it from either way, but so far it's working out to be pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So thanks again to them and I'll say no money was exchanged for this review. They didn't pay me, I didn't pay them. They just sent me this roll of nylon along with a few other different types for me to try out and see how their new line of filament is working out, well new filament in general. So I thank them for letting me just have this opportunity. So let's see what other things they have in store for later this year. All right guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you thought this was kind of cool that you know Kodak is making you know, filament now, they're 3D printing instead of just doing photography, give it a big thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Either way, talk in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you guys about this nylon filament. If you guys wanna stay in tune with what's going on, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell icon, you'll get email notification anytime I upload new content or I do my weekly live streams on the weekends. If you guys wanna support me financially, there's a Patreon link down below me. You can donate to me on a monthly basis. If you wanna do a one-time donation, in the video description, there's gonna be a Streamlabs link and a buy me a coffee. I use the coffee money to go towards buying some new lights and all the other donations are going through me buying another 3D printer. I wanna get a Prusa i3 Mark III. Since he's not gonna send me one, I will buy one eventually. <laughs> and if you guys wanna help me out by just using my fit links down below, do your daily shop on Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, all those kind of things down below. A little slice of what you buy comes here to help me at no cost to you. So no matter what you guys do, even if you watch this video, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy printing.